Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can actually shine light out of my eyes. I'm going to be using the world's brightest flashlight and shining it directly into my mouth and seeing if light can actually come out of my eyes. Now I'm going to be trying this a few different ways. I'm going to be using my sodium vapor lamp to see if you can change the color of light that goes through your body. And also we're going to be trying some cool things to show if you use different wavelengths of light to see if you can actually see what's inside your body. For example, would you be able to tell your blood glucose level just by shining a specific electromagnetic wavelength and seeing what comes back? Now if you've ever held your hand over a flashlight, you might have noticed that your hand kind of has this red glow about it. But why is it red? Well the reason is because the shorter wavelengths of light, meaning the light at the blue end of the spectrum, it gets scattered more easily in your hand. Whereas the red light doesn't get scattered. And because when something gets scattered, it has to pass through more length, that means that it's more likely to get absorbed by your skin. And so the blue end of the spectrum gets scattered and absorbed by your hand, whereas the red end of the spectrum can mostly just pass through it. And so basically your hand just kind of acts like a red filter. So you stick your hand over and you see red. So you can see when I place my hand over the flashlight, it turns red. So now I have a hand light. And also, if you don't have a flashlight, but you still want to see that light can actually get through your skin, then just close your eyes. Notice that when you close your eyes, the color that you see is a reddish color. That's because it's going through the layer of your eyelid. Now, the color of red coming through really has nothing to do with the color of your blood. It doesn't matter that your blood is red. That's not why red is coming through. Now, we saw what happens when you use a normal strength flashlight on your skin. You kind of get this dull red glow. But what if you used a really strong flashlight, something like a 32,000 lumen flashlight, which is more like a spotlight. Most flashlights are in the range of like 2,000 lumen, even tactical flashlights. Now even with a 32,000 lumen flashlight, the light that's coming through your body is still going to be red. So after I try the 32,000 lumen flashlight, then I'm going to be showing you a method that you can use to actually get non-red light coming through your skin, which is pretty cool using my sodium vapor lamp. Okay, so my goal in this is I'm going to be trying to shine this through my head. Now this sounds crazy, but I think it might work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine it into my mouth and I'm gonna cover the rest of, whoa, gosh. That was only 120 lumen. I'm glad that wasn't 32,000 lumen. <laughs> okay, so how I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be putting the flashlight directly up to my mouth like this. And I'm going to be covering the sides with this cloth here. And this cloth is gonna make sure that I'm not losing a lot of light to the background so it's not too bright in the background. And hopefully, if all goes well, there's gonna be enough light that it's gonna shine up through my skull and come out my eyes. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> so I can only do it for a few seconds because most of that light is getting absorbed by my mouth and basically it just starts to burn my mouth within a few seconds. <laughs> so this is only 500 lumen, but when I double click it, it goes to 32,000 lumen. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh God. Holy crap, you guys. I just went back and looked at that footage. It actually went up through my eyes. You could see through this eye, you could see the light coming out of it, the red light coming out of my pupil. <laughs> that was crazy. I need to try that again. Hey, hey, oh. Ah. Ah. Oh, God. Ah. So hot, so hot. <laughs> okay. Okay, that was actually pretty amazing. I didn't know if that was gonna work or not, but you could actually see the light coming out of my eyes. So it was going up through my skull, hitting the bottom of my eyes and shining through and out to the camera. That was amazing. <laughs> so as I mentioned before, you'll notice that the light that was coming out of it was still red light. So basically I was shooting red light out of my eyes. Well, any flashlight that has white light by definition also has red light in it because white light is a combination of all the different colors of light, especially red, green, and blue. But luckily today I have my sodium vapor lamp and this only emits one specific wavelength of light and nothing else. 
and it's a yellow orange wavelength of light. So let's use this sodium vapor lamp and see if we can actually shine light through my body that doesn't turn out to be red, still yellowish light. So watch how different things look under this monochromatic yellow light source. So if I have a yellow banana and a blue bucket, so here's what they look like under normal light, and here's what they look like with the sodium vapor lamp. So you can see that the blue kind of turns this black color, but the yellow banana continues to look yellow because the yellow normally reflects yellow light anyways, but the blue usually absorbs it. So it's, it's absorbing all of the yellow light and it looks kind of this dark black color. So I'm going to be shining my sodium vapor lamp through this tiny little hole here and then sticking my finger over it. So here's what a normal flashlight looks like. So you can see my finger glows red here when I put it over it. I put my hand over it and it glows red. But now let's try it with the sodium vapor lamp. So I just have this cardboard over my lamp here and I just want to block all the other light. Okay, now let's see what this looks like. Okay, stick my finger over it. <laughs> Look at that. So now you get this yellow light coming through and you can totally just see through my finger and it's not red. So this looks like a normal lamp color, but it's my finger now. Look at that. <laughs> so cool to see the light coming through my finger not being red. It's my pinky. <laughs> That's so weird looking. Looks like I'm on fire or something. This is exactly the, it, in fact, this is exactly the same color as fire, but it's coming through my skin. It's so cool. Imagine if you could get a really bright sodium vapor lamp, it would look like your body's on fire. It would look like you're glowing like fire. Look at my finger. It's so cool. Okay, so we've seen how depending on the color of light that hits your skin, some of it will pass through it, some of it will get scattered and absorbed. But what happens if you don't use visible light? Well, then you can get some really interesting stuff to happen. Now, even just using visible light, you can actually tell what's going on inside of your body. So for example, hemoglobin that has oxygen bound to it versus hemoglobin that doesn't have oxygen bound to it absorbs light differently. So normal hemoglobin absorbs most at 420 nanometers wavelength. But if it has oxygen bound to it, its peak is actually at 410 nanometers. So that means that if you just shine light on it, depending on what gets reflected back or scattered back to your sensor, that means you can tell whether there's oxygen or not in the blood. And that's how those little oxygen sensors work that they stick on your finger at the hospital. Now another thing that would be extremely helpful, especially to diabetics, is to be able to tell the blood glucose level. Because then they can tell if there's too much or too little glucose in their system. Now normally they have to do this by pricking their finger and then they test their blood with a machine that's able to tell the blood glucose level. But the problem with that is that you always have to continually prick your finger and also it's periodic and so you don't get a continuous measure of the blood glucose in your system. Now unfortunately you can't use visible light to measure your blood glucose level. But what's really cool is I've been contacted by a company that actually uses radio frequencies instead of visible light to shine on your skin and depending on what gets scattered back to the sensor, they can tell how much blood glucose is actually in your blood. Now they've shown me some of their initial data compared to the pinprick method and it looks extremely promising. They've used some state-of-the-art technology with the antennas that they use and especially some really cool technology in order to analyze the spectra that's scattered back to them or reflected back. And doing this, they are actually able to tell your blood glucose level just by shining radio frequency electromagnetic waves at your skin and seeing what gets reflected back. And they can do this all just with a tiny little band that you wear on your hand. I'll put a link in the description to their website. It just tells a little bit more about it. It isn't launched yet, but I'm really excited for it. Now, the company that's doing this is called No Labs. And the CEO behind it is actually the inventor of the smart light bulb. So this is a really cool team doing it and I'm really excited to see what they can do with this new technology. And they actually sponsored this video so I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. And in the future I'm going to give you some more updates on their technology and let you know when they're going to be launching their Kickstarter campaign for their very first product. It should be pretty cool. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. 
And head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out my new Action Lab subscription box. This is a box where you get to do similar experiments to the ones that you see me do on my channel. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.